Hey friends, it's Mike. It's Thursday, February 7, 2019, and just before noon here in Raleigh, North Carolina on the East Coast. I sat myself down the other day and I was thinking, Mike, where are you going with all this Paul McCartney stuff and Paul is Dead stuff? Is this something that you're going to be doing for the rest of your life? <laughs> and um, so I concluded that I'm going to break this down into two paths. The first path is going to be that I will finish up the work having to do with this version of memoirs. This is the new book, the blue cover, the one after 909 version. And the first piece of work that I did that had to do with this version, the new version, is the current video that I put out the other day, Beatle Doubles and the Melody Maker Awards. As I mentioned in that video, I will also be covering Vivian Stanshall and the Phil Ackrell characters, which this version of memoirs via Billy's narrative and Tom's footnotes gets into much greater detail as to how the whole Vivian Stanshall, Phil Ackrell deal worked. Okay, uh, I'm not going to do a spoiler here. I will have that video out probably within the next two weeks or so, and it will explain everything. And then I will follow that video with a video that has to do with the whole Crowley Satanism aspect of the Beatles story. And I can tell you that it's pretty dark. Um, the one thing that I noticed with this version, and it's very obvious, is that Bill gets into greater detail about the whole um, dark aspect of this, the whole occulted aspect of the Beatle story. Uh, at some points, even myself, it got to be a little uncomfortable. Um, so for others, it's probably going to be very uncomfortable. In fact, there's one footnote, is a rather long footnote, that Tom has in here that talks about the fact that Bill was subjected to trauma-based mind control starting at a very early age and the mind control was used in order to keep him focused on his goals and objectives. So he was pegged from early on, very early on in his life, that he was groomed and nurtured to move along the path that he's moved along. That as he progressed in his life, that he was going to be moved into and transitioned into a position where he was going to have a lot of influence and power in the world. Okay, so that's the basis behind the, the mind control. I might also do a video that will talk to his, uh, his ancestry and his father. And I'll get into that in a moment here because the book is dropping clues in a number of places and I'll, I'll point these areas out. Um, so my job, if I have the time to do it, is to try to piece it together. Um, it is done in a way that it is a puzzle. So the clues are here. Uh, those who are intrepid enough and want to do the investigation and the research will figure it out. I'm not going to say that it's a slam dunk that his father was Alistair Crowley. Um, it could be, but I'm starting to believe that perhaps it wasn't uh, that maybe his father was somebody who was within Crowley's inner circle. Okay, and that's just a thought right now that I have. Because in the book it's telling us, at least my understanding so far, and I did email Tom to make sure that I'm understanding this correctly, but in the book he tells us his name is William Wallace Shepard. But then he goes on to say that the insertion of the name Wallace into, the, uh, into his name as his middle name is actually a clue as to his ancestry and his father. Okay, so again, I'm going to read some excerpts here and you guys will get an understanding, a better understanding of what I'm talking about. Uh, and then I'm going to do a presentation, another PowerPoint presentation where I will uh, summarize what I found as the interesting aspects in the new version of memoirs. But again, uh, I am getting asked uh, a lot whether it's worth buying the blue book if somebody has already read the first edition, which is the red covered book. My answer is yes. The blue book contains a lot more information and Bill's being a lot more specific. In the, in the first edition, it was a little more, coy is probably not the right word, but you know what I mean. It was more cryptic. Uh, you had to read a little more into things. Um, 
in this version, there's a lot less reading into things. As an example, he talks about the whole Stanshall setup and how he did it. It's, it's not cryptic anymore. He just flat out explains how it was done. And again, I will do that video. All right. So anyway, so what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to do a couple of more small videos, short segments. Uh, again, it's going to deal with, let me, I just wrote it down here. I did the doubles with the Melody Maker Awards, um, Stanshall, Ackroll. Then we're going to talk about um, the Crowley connection, Satanism. And if I have time, maybe I'll get into a video that has to do with who his father is, if I can figure it out. And then I'll wrap up with an overall presentation. All right, so another two or three small segments and then maybe an hour and a half, two hour presentation. And then after that, to be honest with you, uh, I think that um, it's going to be cool the engines because I'm not really sure what more there is to talk about. My feeling is once I do the the big presentation to wrap up this version of memoirs, unless something else is revealed or disclosed that is significant, um, I can't see myself continuing to talk about the Paul McCartney conspiracy. Um, now, that being said, when information that comes forth that is worth talking about, then I will do a presentation or I will talk about it. Okay, so I guess what I'm saying is I, I'm seeing this thing wrap up within the next two months or so. And then I will be spending more time going back to the types of shows that uh, my, my main channel is known for. So uh, I think that's my plan right now. Um, it's, it's a lot of work, this conspiracy. It's, uh, you know, some people want to just chalk it up as nothing. It's not nothing because it's getting into everything. It's getting into the deep state. It's getting into Tavistock. It's getting into mind control. It's getting into the occult, black magic, um, and so on. I mean, this conspiracy has everything in it. It's a conspiracy researcher's dream. Um, but it is also extremely time-consuming, okay? The other thing that I want to say before I get into uh, some of these pages I want to call out as far as um, giving us hints as to his ancestry and who his father is, is that I'm not going to be answering a lot of questions from folks who just refuse to read the book, okay? Now, whether you want to read it or not is your call. Um, if you can't afford the book, that's one thing. Um, I could try to help out there, but that's not the case in most cases. Many people have the money to buy the book. It's $27 off of uh, the BillyShears.com site. That includes shipping. And read it. Um, that's all I can say. I, I get flooded with emails. I, I cannot even keep up with the amount of emails that are coming into my Sage Quay email account, including PMs on, uh, on Facebook, PMs on my Sage Quay Facebook page, uh, comments now that are coming in on some of the videos uh, you know many of the emails that are written to me are very lengthy when I print them out and I have to print them out that's how long they are two three four five pages of people writing to me and I appreciate folks writing to me I really do um, but on the other hand I cannot respond to all of those emails I try to respond to as many as I can the ones I won't respond to be frank with everybody, are those that are asking questions that are clearly answered in the book. You've probably even seen me comment on some of the uh, YouTube comments where I said to folks, look, it's probably best that you just read the book because all the questions you're asking me are answered in the memoirs of Billy Shears. Okay, so just that little comment there. and I don't want anybody to take any offense, but it, seriously, I, my reader is just to the point where it's not possible to keep up with it. Okay, so let's uh, let me just flip some pages here, and I don't think Tom will mind me reading this um, to you guys. All right, so there's four footnotes so far that I've come across that have to do with uh, giving us clues into uh, who Billy's father is. And again, I have to put my readers on. So if you have the book, go to the bottom of page 107. So here's the footnote. What's in a name? William used many names for himself and also encoded his father's name in this book. His father's role needs to come to light. Networking with the global elite, 
William's father inadvertently positioned William for greatness practically by birthright. A woman of renown within a cultic elite, one who revered William's father, identified William as a three-year-old musical prodigy. She selected him for initiation and training and shared her plan to use William's service to music to transform the world. The plan that evolved over time as William grew within the inner circle began out of respect for his father. Eventually, before the Beatles' last tour, before the Beatles' last tour, it's very important, the faction pulling for William prevailed over a plan to do Paul's work by many without granting anyone the full position. So what that means is that the whole death of Paul McCartney was predetermined. That's what that is saying. And there are other parts in the book where you clearly understand that this whole replacement had been in the pipeline for a very long time. Okay? All right, so let's now move to page 213. And bear with me as I get there. Okay, so on page 213, put my glasses back on. The media promoted the idea of Paul as the cute beetle. Without that manipulation, the others of the group may have each seemed cuter to more fans. However, for the Illuminati to use a band to change the world, they sought for a face that could symbolically feature the all-seeing eye. Paul's high eyebrow, inherited from his father, made him their best contender. A few others of that inner circle, also impressed by Paul's resemblance to William, considered the possibility and implications of Paul eventually being replaced by the magician's son. And there's more to the footnote, but that's the most pertinent part with regard to uh, identifying who his father could possibly be. Now, again, we could assume it's Alistair Crowley or Alistair Crowley, depending upon how you want to pronounce uh, Alistair's name, okay? Um, but it's possible that it's not. It's possible that it was another magician, and I'm leaning toward the possibility that they were closely aligned with Alistair Crowley. Okay, so I'll leave you with that one. All right, so that was the bottom of page 213. So let's move to page 365 now. So I'm going to read the second half of the footnote at the bottom of page 365, which is a long footnote. In light of Crowley's role in modern Satanism, consider its implications in modern ritual. For example, William and many other leading musicians, along with top-level media executives and other globalists, including several former U.S. presidents, has participated in ritual in the Bohemian Grove, where the most prominent symbol is an enormous owl. It is a 9-meter or 30-foot statue located at the head of the lake in the grove and serves as the backdrop of the yearly cremation of care ceremony. Besides embodying the wise old owl, the name Crowley, if it pronounced Crowley with the owl sound in it, also has further meaning that is significant to William. With a simple internet search, readers may easily discover it for themselves now that they know to check. So there's another clue for us all. Okay, so here's the last footnote, and let me see, that's going to be page 410. So here's the footnote. The generations from William to William are 28 if his above statement is accurate, and Tom is referring to a statement that Bill makes at the top of page 410. And the 28 if is what we see on the license plate of the Volkswagen on the cover of Abbey Road. So just keep that in mind also. It is also possible that William borrowed that number of generations from Matthew 117 from the Bible to suggest his position in the royal lineage and his particular cultic circle that secretly venerates Sir William Wallace. Wallace is the last name of William's ancient ancestor, whom William's family tradition has always referred to as the Hardy Warrior. Using Wallace as if William's middle name recognizes Sir William Wallace, but more importantly, is a code to identify William's biological father, whose name, in yet another code, references being a descendant of that hardy warrior. That middle name and this chapter were included to reveal William's father. So this chapter is entitled Sir William. And also in that footnote, what Tom is telling us is that William, or I believe what Tom is telling us, is that William is using the middle name Wallace as a clue. It is not his real middle name. He's using it in a way in order to help us understand 
who his father is. Okay, so you could see this is like solving a big puzzle. And I have not had time to go onto the internet and start digging into all this stuff. Um, one of the things I was going to do was to take a look at Alistair Crowley's ancestry, uh, also to take a much closer look at uh, Crowley's inner circle and seeing what names pop up and then trying to back solve from there. Okay, so that's it, folks. Um, just some information for you. I know a lot of people were trying to figure out who his, uh, his real father is. Evidently, uh, it is encoded in his book. Uh, again, I haven't figured it out yet, but I'm telling everybody because there are a lot of intrepid people out there. I know because you guys send me the emails uh, who are really, really good researchers. And I know there are a lot of folks out there that are really good at digging into ancestry. So, and if you have the book, even better. Take a look at some of those footnotes that I just read off to you and uh, see what you can find, okay? Make this kind of a team effort, all right? All right, everybody, I appreciate your time. And uh, again, what I'll do is some short segments to cover the, uh, the more important points of um, the new version of the memoirs of Billy Shears, and then I'll do an overview. And then after that, I'm gonna cool my jets a little bit, uh, get back to some of my other stuff. And uh, when uh, significant disclosure uh, presents itself, I will report on it. Okay. Have a great day and uh, we will talk soon. Bye now.